Hello friends, good afternoon. Welcome to CEC Adusat live lecture. Dear friends, today in this session of live lecture, we will be discussing the issue of climate change. As you know, climate change is very significant for nowadays to discuss on because there is a lot of impacts and adverse effect of that which are being felt by international scientific communities which affect our sustainable living and uh, our economic development prospects. So there are lots of uh, international initiatives that have been going on and for your kind information I would like to tell you that currently more than 180 countries are participating in a, in a conference under United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change to discuss how to uh, how to minimize the effect of climate change, how to reduce emission of greenhouse gases and how to, uh, how to limit global temperature to well below 2 degrees centigrade. All there are many more issues which are going to be discussed in the conference which is, uh, which is going on in Paris right now. So today we will we'll be discussing, discussing climate change and its various issues and UN, United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. So today this topic we have our subject expert professor R.B. Singh with us. He is head department of geography Delhi School of Economics University of Delhi. He is also the vice president of International Geographical Union. So with this I would like to welcome Dr. Singh to our show and uh, request him to begin his lecture. Welcome sir. Thank you <coughs> Asmita ji. Dear viewers, today we are going to discuss a very important topic climate change and its linkage with COP21, taking empirical evidences from India. You know, climate change is a reality now. Whatever sign and signals we are getting from different parts of the world, and more specifically, I would like to mention our own study coming from mega cities some part of Himalaya, I can say that we are getting clear cut trend for increasing temperature. Global community realized this problem and under the umbrella of WMO, we have WCRP, World Climatic Change Research Program and a baby of WCRP like a IPCC. Intern governmental panel on climate change also came into existence. Various good reports were prepared, but it is very important for different countries to participate in the process of climate change mitigation and adaptation process. At present, you know, at Paris, most of the states are negotiating with each other for moving towards more better future earth for our next generation. And so that is why I would like to discuss various linkages and particularly I would like to relate such linkages with food, water, energy, biodiversity and health, these all are very much interlinked with each other and climate change cannot be isolated from this. Climate provides basis for ecosystem services, uh, but climate change also restrict our future development uh, process. Further elaborating this, I would like to first understand what is climate change or more specifically I would like to understand the uh, process of climate change. Climate change is a significant and lasting change in the distribution of weather phenomena, weather patterns over periods ranging from decades to million of years. 
WMO identified 30 years period for analyzing climate change. It may be also consider change in the average weather condition or distribution of events around the average. The term is also used for largely denoting changes coming from the human activity. So, whatever climate change we are getting, it may be considered anthropogenic climate change. But it is not a new phenomena, it has been in human history and climate ranges from uh, glacial to non-glacial ages. The concern at present is more for increase of the greenhouse gases, increase of the greenhouse gases and relating with the anthropogenic causal factor. Through this diagram, dear viewers, I would like to tell you some of the important highlights and one can say CO2 is an important greenhouse gas age. Human activity uh, have increased the concentration of the major greenhouse gas age. And if you will see the different scenarios presented before us, before global community, every place you can find after 1940 tremendous increase of greenhouse gas age and global average global te temperature you know warming since the 1950s one can evidence uh, particularly from this diagram. But it is very important to understand the type of driving forces. You know there are two type of driving forces, natural driving forces and anthropogenic driving forces. And here you can see scenarios presented before us that the how natural forces if we will have changes in the climate due to the natural process, uh, processes or forces will not have much impact. But you can see here the how human impact can change these scenarios and whatever we are getting it is a, a synthesis of both, but human action accelerate the process of climate change. Now it is very important to understand what are the important natural climatic variability. This can be you know examined through changes in the sun's orbit within our galaxy, changing solar input, changes in orbital parameters what it is also known as Milanovic oscillation, continental drift, mountain building process and volcanism. So, these are the uh, some of the important activities bringing natural driving uh, forces. Then I would like to discuss with you anthropogenic causes of climate change that is the most important part of our whole greenhouse gases and global warming. You know carbon is a major uh, contributor for global how, uh, absence. Now I would like to discuss with you distribution of carbon you know or uh, contribution of carbon coming from the different sectoral activity, differing, different driving forces. 4 percent coming from industrial processes, 7 percent coming from agriculture, 21 percent coming from transport sector, 65 percent come from the fuel of generating energy particularly excluding the transport sector and about 40 percent carbon emissions are the result of by individual decision taken by people you know and uh, these are the following like deforestation because we use forest for your satisfying our basic needs sometime for satisfying uh, greed of the rich. Energy use in the home 
including the fuel route, transportation, air travel. Now I would like to put before you the one case study for Mauna Loa uh, mean carbon dioxide and you can see the how CO2 increased from 1955 to 2005 you know continuously very rapid rate of increase one can see this is this is this example can you know brought before us a very significant thinking for moving towards mitigation and adaptation of such climate changes now you can see through this diagram you can understand that the how greenhouse gases are absorbed by surface and you can see the if you see this surface long wave radiation here we have more but if you see the outgoing long wave radiation it is less because of the absorbed by the surface and so that is why we have you know uh, problem of the uh, uh, due to the greenhouse gases now very quickly I would like to put before you the uh, important greenhouse gases like water H2O and some of the important source like ocean, rivers, plant, soil, then you know carbon dioxide, CO2, combustion, respiration process, methane is very important and then we have uh, largely coming from the wetlands and oceans, combustions and also the animal related activity. Now I would like to take a very important these two diagram you can see different contribution of different gases in the whole uh, anthropogenic greenhouse gases and you can see here the carbon CO2 81 percent contribution followed by methane 8 percent then other different type of CO2 5 percent uh, carbon di uh, apart from the carbon dioxide and then uh, nitrous oxide 4 percent. Then if you will take the sector wise contribution again you know uh, uh, electricity generation 34 percent contribution coming from the electricity generation followed by transport you know 28 percent industry 2 percent uh, 20 percent and so you know in present context also in Delhi we are more debating on how we can. Uh, reduce burden of transportation on roads of Delhi uh, probably uh, I think the uh, uh, microclimate if you will consider the microclimate uh, it is a, a very much linked with the transport sector. Now how we can get the evidences of climate change particularly the uh, studying uh, climate change phenomena temperature measurement is very important and so uh, temperature measurement as a part of the weather phenomena. Then you know historical and archaeological evidences coming from the different you know uh, sources lake uh, sediments and all glaciers and arctic sea uh, ice loss, vegetation, pollen analysis, dendro a climatology particularly very popularly it is known as the tree ring you know analysis, ice cores analysis of the ice cores, uh, sea level changes these are the some of the important you know evidences one can gain. So uh, many discipline here why I am putting before you this because climate change is a transdisciplinary subject it is very much transdisciplinary means interdisciplinary and more participatory. So, it is a scientific a study together with you know participatory approaches if you will talk about the climate change uh, mitigation and the adaptation then I think we have to uh, uh, take uh, opinion of the people we have to involve the people in the process of climate change mitigation. Here you can see the effects on precipitation and how uh, 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 in USA particularly in the dry days also increased and uh, in, in this diagram you can find this the how this the uh, even precipitation increase in a 
uh, uh, substantial part of the United States of America. Another important phenomena can be linked with climate change is increased magnitude of extreme events, you know. And so extreme events, whatever the hazards, you know, we get, it is known as extreme events. And you can find this, the, uh, uh, this can be examined through variety of models. Two models here I would like to put before you, you know, models are generally math mathematical expression of the climate system. And it can be run with different type of the forcing like a, a higher or lower uh, greenhouse gas concentration. Uh, so, you know, model in are the only way to capture the complexity of increased greenhouse concentration. One very general, uh, it is known as general circulation model, GCMs. This is huge mathematical equation to describe the behavior and the interaction between the components of the different uh, climate system. And this uh, 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 GCMs make assessment by comparing existing climatic condition uh, established by the baseline climatic data and uh, with you know predicting for future taking into consideration of the temporal data. But regional climatic model is a more appropriate for uh, local situation, regional situation because we can extract uh, uh, the high resolution. These are the high resolution model that are nested with GCM. So, it is very much linked with the GCM, but regional climate model can give a more better result for us because it deals with local situation, regional situation. Uh, generally, we consider the grid resolution of 50 kilometer for this. The, they give much higher resolution output than uh, uh, GCMs, hence much greater sensitivity to a smaller scale, you know, a study, particularly when we are trying to study the mountainous area, uh, some coastal region or the uh, uh, dry zone, various type of case study can be taken into consideration. Before I proceed for analyzing impact, I would like to put before you this the socioeconomic situation in Indian context. As you know, we have 2.4 percent of the world geographical area, but supporting 17.5 percent of the human population. Then you know, uh, we are also uh, having largest global poor, almost 30 percent, um, 24 percent of the global population without access to any type of electricity, 3.4 million people, 30 percent global population relying on solid biomass for cooking. And so, that is why we have more and more pressure on natural resources. Uh, 92 million without access to safe drinking water still and so India may be considered as a water stress country. Uh, uh, so, not only the uh, scarcity we have, but also the water uh, stress, the average annual consumption of in 2011 was only 0.6 tons of the oil equivalent per capita as global average of 1.88. So, you can understand from your own perception the type of the problem we are getting. But you know see the if you see human development index, it is a very lower rank human development and so that is why it is very important for us to provide a dignified uh, honorable life to our population to meet their uh, aspiration coming from different region of our country. Still, we, we are developing country and per capita income, if you see, is still low in comparison of the other, you know, 14.8 US dollar per annum. Around 363 million people, 30 percent of population live in poverty and 1.77 million people are houseless, you know, so many large population almost 44.9 percent of the population uh, are unemployed. 
Now I would like to put before you the, the uh, 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 diversity in rainfall pattern you can see. If you go to the eastern side, we have a high rainfall average you see 2500 millimeter and highest rainfall receiving place uh, is also located uh, in east, uh, northeast India. But if you go to the western side, we have rainfall even less than 100 millimeter. Now you can see this the type of problem GNA is facing. You know earlier uh, Uttarakhand got the flood, uh, floods are the annual ordeal in northern India. But you know in southern India due to the retreating monsoon you see this the and maybe due to the other local and the physical factor because we are uh, uh, you know not able to uh, contain haphazard development in the peripheral area and people are uh, moving to the uh, uh, low lying area and they, they are constructing the houses and you see this the high rainfall brought a significant changes flooding even not only the loss of property but loss of human lives in, in Chennai and these all can be linked with some extent link, link with the climate change. So, uh, you can uh, see here that the how uh, different uh, type of the climatic parameters can be examined. Here you can see this the, through this diagram, particularly I would like to uh, draw your attention towards the 1900 onwards. In this diagram you can see in both temperature and rainfall, what you are getting here not a change, but is a climatic variability. So, in Indian context, we can say climatic variability, use the word the term climatic variability rather than the climatic change, because we have variability year to year, decade to decade variation one can see in the both situations. You can see here annual maximum average temperature 1901 to 2007 through diagram and trend line actually moving towards the increase of temperature. Similarly, you know I would like to put before you several type of the drivers and indicators. It is very important. Indicators are very, very important to get idea about the a type of the magnitude of change we are getting. You see about 105.48 million hectare is under desertification, you know, and desertification uh, is may be considered is a synthesis of both natural factor and the human factor, but more specifically it can be con uh, considered as a desertification is a human problem. Nearly 32.7 percent of the total geographical area considered as a desert or the semi-arid, you know. Mean loss of glacier area is around 5.4 percent from the total glacial area uh, as in 2006. 190 vegetation type loss, so biodiversity also can be linked with this. More than 6000 sample species lost, rapid changes in the land use land cover cover. And particularly here I would like to draw your attention towards the critical environmental situation. All critical or marginal zones of India, they face massive a critical land use land cover change. Rapid urbanization in the city, you see this the uh, how many cities 1980 we had 81 we had only 12 uh, metropolitan cities, now we have more than 56 metropolitan cities increase of annual average temperature in, and so that is why we are getting increase of earlier you have seen the increase of extreme events and increase of disaster in different critical situation. This can be also linked with the deforestation. We have you can see this the continuous you know a changes in the forest cover and now as per forest policy 
of India, we should have one third area should be under the forest. In mountainous area, two third area should be under the forest. But you know, if you will see now at present, hardly 21 percent area we have under the forest. Now you can see this the spatial distribution of forest cover, except northeast, we do not have adequate forest cover as per forest policy in different part of the country. And this can be linked with the intensive land use and intensive land use can be linked with the rapid population growth. So, urbanization, induced changes, then also the agricultural development induced changes uh, can be seen in this process. And so, estimate carbon emission you can see rapidly increasing in, in, in India and here different category of carbon emission you can see solid fuels, liquid fuels and from gas fuels and the fossil fuel uh, uh, you know. And if you see the trend here, the fossil fuel is a more sharper increase. So, uh, still we are more dependent on the uh, fossil use of the fossil fuel, but we have to change our you know scenario in coming years. And so, climate change can bring several impact, you know, variable rainfall patterns, melting of glaciers, increased runoff, flooding, water scarcity, decreased agricultural productivity, impact of health of flora, fauna and human beings. And most important impact one can see through the Himalayan glaciers, mountains or Himalaya may be con considered as a tallest water tower of the world. You know. If you will consider the highest per unit availability of water, we get from the Himalaya. But due to the climate change, due to uh, uh, in recent years, glaciers are melting and so in short term, we are getting the flooding and then in long term, we may face the problem of uh, what scarcity. Now, one two important study I would like to put from our own study, you can see this two data we have taken seasonal mean maximum uh, temperature of Chamoli and Pithoragar and if we have increase, you can see particularly I would like to draw your attention towards the winter temperature increasing. Then you know if you will see the rainfall also we have a significant changes in the uh, uh, same even in urban area I would like to tell you water uh, waste disturbances we induce rainfall increase substantially in recent years. Earlier we used to get 2, 3 western disturbances induce rainfall now we are getting 7, 8 and continuing until the uh, May you know. So, this is a very very unusual phenomena we are getting you know. Then you can see this the changes in the glaciological parameters uh, in the area length you can see here the how much changes and particularly here I can tell you that the uh, uh, toposites we analyze the data taking from the toposite and also the satellite data, Aster satellite data and then we found the changes you can you can see this the all Milan, Tipta and Donagiri glaciers, we are getting problem of uh, 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 retreating of snouts of the Milan, Donagiri and Tipta. I would like to tell you one more important phenomena. In recent years, many uh, people are not agreeing to the this statement that glaciers are melting, but you know in recent years we found lot of disintegration of uh, glaciers and disintegration phenomena requires a careful geographical and geophysical uh, and geological inquiry in order to understand this process in more better way. We tried to collect the some of the uh, geomorphic evidences you know and you can see here the changing landscape confluence of Ratma, Ratban and South Nilgiri glaciers and abrupt changes in the slope of ablation zone particularly. Same you know you can find in the other part and these are. 
Now, if you move towards the western Himalaya, here I would like to put uh, one case study from uh, western Himalaya. Western Himalaya, we do not have much impact, but particularly west eastern part of uh, Himachal Pradesh, you can see changes in the uh, 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 snow cover. And this snow cover is a very, very important change uh, coming through the climate change. You can see this, the, uh, the data and statistics also put in here. Altitudinal variation in the region has impact on decrease in the snow area. Uh, because if you will go towards uh, western side, we have more uh, high altitude. And so, it is very important for us to link climate change, uh, uh, glacier lakes and then with the outburst flooding. It is known as GLOF, G L O F, glacier lake outburst flood. You can see here. Glaciers exist in the upper part, in the slope, then we have avalanche zone, then we have vacant state due to the glacier receding and uh, lakes are created, you know, and various lakes you can find and more specifically I would like to tell in Himachal Pradesh and uh, Sikkim, you can find such lake. And then, you know, moraine dams and these uh, moraine dams are sometime uh, due to the impact of moraine dams, we have problems and it can create a big problem in low-lying area. Uh, any burst of moraine dams or glacier lake outburst flood, you know, can cause a, a very large scale change uh, problem and destruction in our uh, low-lying area particularly the down, down streams. You see the potassium globe sites, these are the some of the important potential globe sites we are identified, taking into consideration of the temperature and variety of other hydrological and uh, climatic parameters. We also came down to some uh, Bhuntar, Bhuntar is the nearest to the Manali area and we examine. So, we get some increasing trend, but little less here you can see linear trend here you can see uh, we, we are not like a eastern side. Western side we have more uh, high increase of temperature. So, I would like to summarize this in total annual rainfall in lower valley we have a steep decline, but upper valley only the decline. Seasonal rainfall decline in precipitation in monsoon and post monsoon period and upper valley decline in every month. Annual mean maximum temperature increase in lower valley, but slightly increase. Annual mean millennium decrease. Seasonal temperature, you know, again a snowfall very less or almost disappear. And if you will see the upper valley, a snowfall has declined from 6, 7 feet to 2, 3 feet. So, these are the some of the important indicator one can see uh, for uh, impending climate change. Uh, maybe at present we are getting a little trend, but in future we can get the. And so, if now global community is moving towards for understanding the future earth, take into consideration of the different uh, critical zone of uh, and situation uh, of our uh, world, I think so Himalaya may be considered is a very, very important critical. You see the impact of on river. We have a very high flow uh, in high di river discharge in uh, this uh, uh, river Bias here and uh, uh, at the Bhuntar and particularly you can see at the monsoon period, this very increase, you know. So, here I would like to make distinction between the high flow season and low flow season. High flow season we have flooding maybe link, low flow season we have a scarcity or drought and you can see in recent years we had Koshi flood, Bihar in 2008, uh, Leh flash flood, Jammu Kashmir you know 
uh, Uttarakhand in 2013, Jammu and Kashmir flood in 2014. You see this the how uh, uh, through map uh, this whole northern India you know can be considered as uh, the flood affected area. Or or another part of the uh, uh, this northern India uh, very severely affected by flooding. You can see the damages, life lost cattle lost, house damage, crop area affected. And so, it is very much linked with sustainability of our country. In September, end of September, global community also passed a very important sustainable development goals. Sustainability in our country is very much linked with the climate change. Whatever you are getting, many disasters are linked with the climate change, like flooding, drought, some extent landslides, you know, extreme weather condition, these all are the very much linked with the climate change phenomena. And so, considering all aspects, I think global community has started thinking on not only analyzing, but how we can proceed for uh, mitigation, adaptation, how we can move for improving our understanding. And here I would like to put before you the history of the climate change process now. In 1979, the first World Climate Change Conference was recognized, this important. 80 to 90, a number of intergovernmental you know, negotiations took place on the climate change. 1990, IPCC established uh, in 1988 actually by UNEP and WMO. And they issued the first assessment. Now we have the fourth assessment report. Uh, available. In December 90, the UN General Assembly approved the start of the treaty negotiation under the UN EPS uh, CCC. And deadline set uh, uh, 1992, June 1992, as you know, June 1992 is a very important because it reached a, a Rio Earth Summit. And so, UN CCC was signed by 154 states at the Rio de Janeiro during the Earth Summit. That was a very historical step taken by the global community for, you know, moving for, uh, towards mitigating climate change. Uh, in 1994, uh, this treaty came into force in March uh, 21st and February 1950, uh, 1995, the conference of the party became the important convention, ultimate authority of the governing party, C-COP, and you know the COP 21, already 20 held and 21 is uh, going on at Paris, you know. So, if you will see uh, uh, the, the whole change and historical development of global initiative to mitigating climate change, emergence of IPCC is one, and where the WMO uh, and UNEP, United Nations Environment Program, and uh, they created also the WCRP, World Climatic Change Research Program, because IPCC, you know, came from this. Main purpose was to assess the latest peer-reviewed literature, compare different type of the models, computer-based model, to achieve consensus about the, what is the trend. Now, what is UNFCCC? In general term, the UN Framework Convention provides an overall framework for intergovernmental efforts to address climate change, more specifically it establishing an objective and principle commitment for different groups of countries or a set of uh, institutions, all of which work to enable continued talk as well as future action to address the global climate change. That is the UNFCC. Uh, now, I would like to put before you different component of this uh, UNFCCC. And first one very important, the conference of the party. Then we have subsidiary body of scientific and technological advice, subsidiary body for implementation, SBI, convention secretariat, global environmental facility, you know, up just immediately after the uh, uh, Rio, this global environmental facility 
uh, at World Bank was created and they are providing a lot of good you know and uh, green you know technology and fund resources to the people from developing country to the region from developing country country from the region from country and then IPCC. Uh, I would like to take up here this conference of the parties COP is a supreme decision making body and all states that are party to the convention are represented at the COP. They review implementation convention. This is a very important instrument for taking decision promoting the effective implementation in different part of the country about the funding, about the different scenarios uh, for more and more renewable, how renewable energy can be used. The a key task of the scope is to review the national communication also because uh, we are you know those who, countries which, uh, who are party of this conference of parties scope. I think they used to present before COP uh, different uh, uh, guidelines or different type of the programs initiated by their country and so they review, it is very important the reviewing process. Then you know based on the information available COP assesses the effect of the measure taken by the party and progress made in achieving the ultimate objective of the convention. I think they, they meet every year. And uh, first was held Berlin in Germany in March 1995 and it also uh, you know is a secretariat of the uh, Berlin is the secretariat of the COP and uh, uh, this, its presidency at present you know the France is uh, I think taking over the uh, presidency but it rotate you know among the uh, different regions. Uh, coming from Africa, Asia, Latin America and Caribbean, Central and Eastern Europe, Eastern Europe and others. If you will see this the different type of the COP you know starting from the it was held at first at Berlin, second Geneva, third at, uh, it is known as Kyoto Protocol you know that has been a very very important in 1997. Uh, uh, Buenos Aires, then Bonn, the Hague, again Bonn. Uh, even we also organized COP8 in New Delhi, Milan, Buenos Aires, then Montreal, Nairobi, uh, uh, Bali, you know, COP17, Durban, 18, Doha, 19 at Warsaw, 20 at Lima, and at present in 2015 we have. Uh, Paris, France. Now I would like to relate a specific contribution of India in this uh, uh, the way. As you know, we signed in 1992 and ratified in 1993. Uh, India uh, do not have binding greenhouse gas mitigation commitment in recognition of their small contribution, you know because the many countries are contributing and still you know we have debating that the uh, uh, great debate between developed and developing countries at Paris also uh, big you know uh, uh, developed countries they are arguing that the even the uh, developing countries uh, uh, not all but at least few developing countries they should also uh, participate in contrib uh, uh, financial contribution but uh, still India or Ch China or several other uh, South Africa they are opposing this that we are not much contributors and so you know Ministry of Environment and Forestry is particularly the focal organization of this they constituted many working groups on this looking after the uh, uh, our commitment and uh, then you know Kyoto Protocol uh, of UNFCC was adopted in 1997 and um, uh, uh, particularly you know to reduce the greenhouse gas emission by an average 5.2 percent below 1990 level. And this was actually part of the article 12 of the Kyoto Protocol provides the also the clean development mechanism. And we have several other program related with the CDM projects in different part of the country. More specifically I would like to mention the Himalaya and several forest uh, program. 
current initiative in India improve our understanding of climate change and comply with the requirement of UNFCC. We are uh, 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 preparing national commitment. We support the Asian list uh, cost greenhouse gas abatement strategy. Uh, 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 we have extensive methane measurement campaign coordinated by national NPL. We established the technology uh, information forecasting and assessment council under the DST. Participatory forest management strategy was adopted. Coastal zone management and I think this all union territory and coastal states from the uh, they are uh, uh, you know implementing this coastal zone regulation notification. Then generation of the much needed information about the vulnerability to climate change under the ongoing several projects they have undertaken Ministry of Environment Process, Government of India. Involvement of a number of governmental and independent agency in the climate change research in India. Many research projects are given to the university and uh, academic institutions for improving our understanding about risk relating to you know uh, uh, climate change mechanism and the risk relating to uh, uh, climate change phenomena. Various scientists uh, international international level they are playing important role through various international programs like international Indian ocean expedition, monsoon experiment, Indian ocean experiment, world climate research program, global observing system and international geosphere biosphere program. But now we have new uh, future earth initiative. Now you can see here this uh, if you see the world development here uh, uh, between the human development Indians and per capita energy and you can see the trend line particularly in India all you know this the Canada has a more better and if you will come towards then you know like uh, underdeveloped country you know like Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, India, China, Brazil all on very very low about this the per capita energy consumption. If you will see this diagram also expenditure on adaptation as percent of the total government expenditure increased recently uh, to address the climatic variability problem. But if you will see expenditure on adaptation as a percent of GDP almost a static a starting from 1997 to 98 little bit slightly increase in uh, after 2005 and 7. Then expenditure by India you can see on environmental management a uh, lot of done on poverty alleviation and livelihood security poverty is not a phenomenon of the past and forest conservation, drought proofing, rural education, infrastructure, disaster management, crop improvement and India is intended nationally to determine the contribution and we are working toward the climate justice with the uh, with the principle of uh, Yajur Veda with principle of Yajur uh, Veda and I would like to quote from that the one very important quote I would like to take that unto heaven be peace unto the sky and the earth be peace. Peace be unto the water, unto the herbs and tree be peace. So, the peace, global peace can be achieved one of the important mechanism for uh, mitigating climate change. You see India national initiative, several action plan we are taken, you know green India, Himalayan ecosystem, strategic knowledge of climate change, sustainable agriculture water mission, water habitat, but one important point here uh, I would like to put the just yesterday I think if I exactly remember yesterday uh, CAG report uh, you know presented 
and you know according to the CAIGRU group, the national achievement for purchase of electricity from renewable energy sources 2012-13 and 13-14 was only 4.28 and 4.5 percent respectively. Half of the target achieved only, you know. If you consider the states, Tamil Nadu and Himachal Pradesh, they are performing more better situation. So, here I think we have to do implementation is very, very important, you know. Uh, how we can implement all, because we had uh, a lot of target, but. So, if you will see the 2015 uh, agreement, we are committed toward the positive, creative and forward looking manner, establishing a established cooperative and equitable global architecture based on the climate justice, principle of equity and common. Prime Minister of India, while addressing the United Nations on 25th September 2005, I would like to quote a very important, we, I quote, we all believe that international partnership must be at the center of our efforts, whether it is development or combating climate change. And the principle of common but differentiated responsibility is the dead bedrock of our collective enterprise. When we speak only of climate change, there is a perception of our desire to secure the comforts of our life style. When we speak of climate justice, we demonstrate our sensitivity and resolve to secure the future of the poor from the perils of natural disasters." Unquote. So, if you see this, the India's uh, policy framework, we adopted several program, I would like to mention 2006 National Environmental Policy, Action, action Plan, I already discussed Energy Conservation Act, National Policy on Farmers, Natural Electricity Policy, Integrated Energy Policy. And India hereby communicates its intended nationally determined for 2021-2030. You can see uh, one, two important point here like I would like to put before you to reduce the emission intensity of this GDP by 33 to 35 percent by 2030 from 2005 level. To achieve about 40 percent of cumulative electric power installed capacity from non-fossil fuels based energy sources by 2030. To create an additional carbon sink of 2.5 to 3 billion tons of CO2 equivalent to better adapt the climate change in a vulnerability assessment, particularly looking the agriculture, water resources, Himalayan region, coastal region, domestic and new and additional funds is very important, to build capacity is very important. And so that is why if you see India is determined to continue its ongoing intervention, more efficient and cleaner technology on thermal power generation. So few important sectors were selected renewable energy sector, transport sector, energy efficiency, then uh, you know uh, reducing emission from the east, west, developing climate resilience infrastructure, then green India mission and then the uh, uh, enhancing the climate resilience and reduce vulnerability. Some of the important strategy I would like to tell you mention more than five times increase in renewable capacity national solar mission, solar power uh, tall plaza, national small grid mission, green energy corridor projects, uh, energy conservation uh, a, a type of national campaign. You know recently a small city uh, a campaign was also uh, taken into consideration, a small city development, 100 small cities are being developed and where you know this infrastructure development and environmental component is very, very important. National Heritage City Development uh, uh, Augmentation Yojana, Atal Mission to Regeneration and Urban Transformation, Clean India Mission, uh, Zero Effect, Zero Defect with Make in India, Green Highway Plantation, you know almost the 140,000 kilometer long tree line along both sides of the national highway, hybrid electric vehicles you know, passenger vehicles, fuel efficiency standards, policy to increase production of uh, 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 energy efficient three-phase locomotive 
and again ultimately you know switch over to 100 percent diesel uh, low core from 2016 and uh, 17 uh, uh, onwards. Policy directive to use 5 percent biodiesel in traction fuel in diesel locomotives. Uh, in recent years you might be knowing a, a, a great debate uh, uh, here going on in Delhi about the air quality and human health. You know few days back even this problem was Beijing in Beijing you know in China a great alert was you know given uh, about this health risk. So, health and well being is very much linked and these all are linked with the climate change related ac uh, activity and we have to see that the how national air quality index lunch with one number, one color and one description to give the status of air pollution in particular city. You know I think here I also I can tell you that our planning should be based on also the uh, 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 urban heat island based study, soil health card scheme, recent adaptation study, Krishi uh, Vikas Yojana, Pradhan Mantri Yojana, these are the very important you know setting up the a big fund, national adaptation fund, reduction in subsidy and fossil fuels, coal loss and finally, I would like to conclude that intensive anthropogenic activity are largely responsible for climate change. Forest plantation is a very, very important for carbon sequestration, many aspects like in energy efficiency, fuel efficient vehicles, triple nuclear power, increased solar power, decreased deforestation, these are very, very important. But finally, one line I would like to take you that yesterday in basic country in at Paris, uh, uh, Brazil, South Africa, India and China committed to the Paris climate and climate outcome, but rage about differentiation principle part of the UNFCCC. Difference on uh, uh, you can find a lot of differences in the uh, funding and financing for the adaptation loss and damage. You know OECD report on finance challenged by many country dollar 62 billion you know they claim, but you know it flawed and even China opposed this India seek a storage technology under innovation mission. But very important step taken by India, India has set a target of distributing 770 million LED bulbs by next year and this is a very impressive program in our country. So, dear viewer here I would like to conclude my lecture. Thank you so much sir for this informative and uh, interesting lecture. Thank you for viewer for watching and stay tuned keep watching us. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here. Thank you.